and welcome back to the anime news for the week ending February 15th, 2020, where um, today we do not have the avatar. I'm just talking straight to you about some of the anime news of the week, starting with the live action adaptation of Wotakoi Love is Hard for Otaku, which uh, opened and debuted at number one on opening weekend in Japan. That is pretty darn cool. Sold 169,000 tickets to take in about 2.08 million U.S. dollars equivalent from Saturday to Sunday. Um, and sold, um, uh, all told, about 2.73 million U.S. from Friday to, uh, Friday to Sunday, uh, which is pretty darn cool. Uh, that's on 304 screens. Uh, it earned 18% more in its opening weekend than the live-action Disastrous Life of Psyche K. Um, so that's pretty darned impressive for a live-action adaptation of anime to open at number one in the weekend, especially for a uh, you know otaku love uh, you know, romance sort of film. So good on you there for Wotakoi. Um, also good on Hayao Miyazaki, the um, uh, uh, the uh, bleh, the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures. That's the name. Um, will be opening a um, opening soon. That is the museum of the MPA, the ah, the Academy, the Motion Picture Academy. Um, and one of their first exhibits will be on Hayao Miyazaki. That's what makes this all work together. Um, and they've said that some of the material in that will be uh, uh, stuff that has not been seen outside of Studio Ghibli's archives from Totoro and Spirited Away as such. There will be, be um, at least 200 concept sketches, character designs, storyboards, layout cells, backgrounds, film clips, and immersive environments. That's pretty cool. Plus some unique Ghibli merchandise, so they say, at the museum's shop. Uh, the whole museum will be a retrospective of the 90-year history of the Oscars, obviously, um, uh, so forth and so on. So it's really cool to see um, the American Academy honor um, Hayao Miyazaki, a you know, Japanese anime director. That's pretty pretty darn cool. Um, some slightly more worrying news. Um, it's been announced that Toonami is uh, shortening its block to only three hours. That said... Um, Jason DeMarco, the Senior Vice President and Creative Director for Adult Swim, um, has um, uh, said that the five and a half to six hour block was just really long, and as he put it, quote, um, getting too expensive and unwieldy to handle, end quote, uh, which in my opinion sounds like you know, that's a lot of content to license and put on there, and so um, that kind of raises your profile and raises your budget in ways that might be a little difficult for something like a cartoon Network, so um, uh, he stated, uh, DeMarco stated that his team prefers a three-hour broadcast length for Toonami. It just kind of feels right. So sounds like a good um, uh, move overall. You know, obviously, everyone wants more anime on television, but you can get too big. So that sounds like what's uh, happening there. Um, so hopefully it's not too big of a deal. Um, moving back into film news... The official website for um, Seizoru Tori no Habatakanai The Clouds Gather, which is the anime film of Twittering Birds Never Fly, um, their website has revealed that the manga is inspiring a second film called The Storm Breaks, um, including a few screenshots from the second film. This is an uh, anime film based on a boy's love manga. Uh, there will also be an original OAD for the franchise titled Don't Say Gold. And... Um, that's pretty cool. The uh, first film opened in Japan um, last Saturday, and um, uh, you know, good to see more anime films coming out. If that is your thing. Um, speaking of more um, things out there, Shinichiro Watanabe, legendary anime director behind Cowboy Bebop, um, uh, Samurai Champloo, and Carolyn Tuesday, uh, will be um, attending South by Southwest in Austin, Texas. On uh, March 17th, where he will be speaking at a conference panel that day. This will be the same day as the performance um, of uh, the Singing Voices for Carol and Tuesday. That's, that kind of makes sense. So he'll be there, um, uh, presumably talking about Carol and Tuesday and the rest of his stuff. So good to see a legendary anime director over here in the States. Uh, a few other bits of news. The final... 
uh, event for the Hatsune Miku Miku Expo Concert Series will be in North America in Montreal. Uh, on May 15th, Hatsune Miku will appear at Montreal's Place Belle. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not sure. Um, and that's going to be pretty cool. Um, now, it'll also be at other places in North America. Um, Coachella, Vancouver, LA, Orlando, DC, Toronto, etc. from April to May. But the final uh, concert date will be May 15th in Montreal, so if you're interested in Miku, definitely uh, there's where to catch her final um, uh, final date of the tour. Uh, finally, a bit of uh, odd news. A recent anime film called The Island of Giant Insects um, launched a Kickstarter just a couple of days ago for an English dub of the film. Um, so the thing here is that um, it's about a, um, it's a survival horror story, plane crash, uh, a bunch of high schoolers, I believe, um, um, end up on this island filled with giant insects, imagine that. Um, the film uh, opened January 10th in Japan, um, and I believe it is also streaming on Crunchyroll right now. Um, uh, yes, that's correct. Um, everywhere outside Asia. So the, the staff announced that they're launching this Kickstarter specifically for an English uh, dub of the film to make a final edition. Uh, the campaign will end in about a month on March 15th. Unfortunately, I'm checking the site right now, and the um, they're looking for a total of U.S. equivalent um, $77,419, and they're currently at 7212 so about 10% of that, a little under 10% of that, um, after uh, two days. So not looking too incredibly, you know, great for the film. It might still make it there. Uh, a lot of projects like this start slow and kind of gr uh, grow over time. They will certainly need that. But sadly, not a, uh, not a ringing endorsement for the Island of Giant Insects. So... Here's hoping that uh, that turns around and they're able to, to do that and get that dub made because, you know, more exposure for anime is usually a good thing. So here's hoping. That's the news for this week. Thanks for watching. See you next week.